gathered today to continue the series uh, of prepare for new Ukrainian school webinars uh, provided by Cambridge University Press and the Linguist Company. And today we are talking about listening and speaking with prepare Ukrainian edition with the examples of prepare Ukrainian edition uh, and concentrating on these skills. So, as we know, there are uh, two types of language skills, receptive and productive. Uh, reading and listening are receptive, writing and speaking are productive. But we paired listening and speaking together uh, for a reason, because these are both uh, very communicative uh, skills and they are anyways connected because we usually speak and listen at the same time unless this is a webinar uh, and we uh, we usually listen for somebody speaking and respond uh, and we will see how they are connected and how it works in uh, in the books that we are preparing for the next year. So, listening. What do we listen to in real life? This is a question over to you. And I will ask you to type in the chat, what do we listen to in real life? Okay, I've got music, news, report, series, programs, dialogues, a talk, phone conversation, conversation, that's a good one, exchanges, information, TV, okay, speech, ads, people and birds, oh, thank you, that's a good one. Oh, okay. There are two podcasts. Great. There are so many things. I, uh, I don't, um, <laughs> they're jumping and popping up so fast. Information, conversation, dialogues, news, daily life and music. Okay. Thanks a lot. Let's see what I have here. So we listen to interviews, instructions, loudspeaker announcements, radio news, committee meetings, shopping. Uh, theater shows, telephone chats, lessons, lectures, conversations, gossips, uh, watching television and storytelling. And uh, how many of these things that you named uh, do we actually listen to without seeing? It's not much these days, unless it's a podcast. Uh, in this case, we don't look at anything, but if we're talking about TV shows, conversations, we see and we listen at the same time. And it's very connected um, thing because uh, we still have visual perception while listening. And we'll see why it's important to note this. Uh, so what is the product of developing listening skills? Uh, that's, um, that's a funny question because well, uh, if we think of a product uh, of developing any skill uh, as a product, we have a student who can. Yeah. So what are the can do uh, statements? What is the product of developing listening skill with students? What students can do when we develop their listening skills? That's another one over to you to the chat. Product is speaking, hmm, but we're developing listening skills, right? Understanding, reacting, okay, thank you. Communication, yeah, somewhere here. So if we think, okay, think interaction, great. Interaction, understanding, getting information. Great, thank you very much. Uh, so when we think of listening, um, uh, of a product of developing listening skills, we have a student who can, um, uh, we have a listener, right? 
uh, with his expectations of what he's listening to and purposes. Uh, we are looking as well as listening. Uh, we uh, have ongoing purposeful listener respond and we need to keep attention uh, to, mm, so the student can uh, build expectations, have a purpose for listening. Student can um, listen and look and combine uh, both of the feelings, both of the both of the senses. Student can respond to the information input, and student can keep attention. So, uh, what are the challenges while listening? What problems do we meet when we um, have the listening lesson? And again, I'd like to hear from you a little bit more today. Vocabulary is a challenge. Oh, nice to meet you too. <laughs> Speed, that's true. Pronunciation, dialects, lack of vocabulary. Lack of vocabulary sounds like a huge problem. Misunderstandings, uh, understandings, accent, new words. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see what challenges I prepared. Mixed ability students, understanding language local names okay so these are actual response uh, from students uh, and what problems they have while listening they have trouble catching an actual sound of the foreign language how do we practice that of course with authentic materials because uh, when students are studying, it is important that they um, from the very beginning listen to real language and uh, so get used to it. I have to understand every word. If I miss something, I feel I'm failing and get worried and stressed. Here in this situation, we, uh, we are talking about uh, not really a listening problem, but a problem of a strategy. So when students listen to something, they don't have to know all of the words. They need to catch the meaning and they need to have a purpose why they are listening for uh, to uh, this text, why they are listening to this podcast. So there should be a very specific and understandable task and understanding of a student what it means to succeed in this task. So how, they, uh, how do they succeed uh, in listening? Three, I can understand people if they talk slowly and clearly. I can't understand fast, natural, native sound sounding speech. If we are talking about grade five, uh, there is a can do statement. Uh, in listening, students understand the language they know. They identify the words they know. They identify the topic and the, um, the meaning of this conversation or monologue if the speaker speaks slowly and um, actually makes attempt to be understood. So what it means that we can't put uh, fast natural speaking speakers into uh, grade five books, right? We can only uh, use graded slow language so students don't struggle understanding um, the natural speech uh, and we gradually increase the complexity and increase the speed so uh, students really get used to it. And very often parents might say that um, if they go to another country and their students don't know the language because they don't understand what uh, native speakers say, that's normal. And we need to explain that it's different. It's a gradual process. And uh, of course, it's good to be in a native speaking environment, but uh, it's about the methodology. 
A2 level is not about understanding uh, speakers who speak naturally fluently without making an attempt of being understood. All right. I need to hear things for, I need to hear things more than once in order to understand. That's a simple um, solution here. So we play the recordings usually for different purposes. Purpose one is very simple to understand, uh, to uh, listen and answer simple questions like uh, where these people are, what they are talking about, who are they and so on. And um, then we play the recording again for more details and then we can even play it again to check. If we play the recording three times, we, uh, we teach students uh, to get used to it and not to get frustrated and listen to any, every detail. All right. I find it difficult to keep up with all the information I'm getting and cannot think ahead or predict. Uh, we can predict in the lead in to listening first. And second, we can, uh, with, with students, yeah, to have uh, the pre-listening task. It is important. Uh, again, we have a purpose and we need to teach students the strategy of making notes uh, for the specific information when we listen to it for the second time. And uh, it's important to explain to the students that they don't have to uh, catch everything at once. We don't catch everything at once, right? So it's fine. We will play it two times with different purposes, for example. Six, if the listening goes on a long time, I get tired and find it more and more difficult to concentrate. This is completely not the language uh, problem. This is the problem of the length of the uh, tech of the recording. So um, for level A2 in grade five, the beginning of level A2 in grade five, all the texts are quite short. They should be short and they should be uh, slow enough, not very slow, but slow enough so students understand and feel that they are succeeding. Uh, and it's better to give them several short uh, texts to listen than one very long text that um, will uh, exhaust them. Cognitive processes while listening. Uh, there are two main processes happening in the um, while listening. Uh, in the listeners' heads. Uh, so it's top-down process and bottom-up process. What is happening in the top-down listening? So the use of um, background knowledge in understanding the meaning of a message, right? Uh, if we have a text about um, rules, yeah, uh, students exchanging their descriptions of their rules, so before we go to this task, it's good to, um, to list the words students already know about furniture, about how the rooms are called, what's in their rooms and so on. Top-down processing goes from meaning to language. So first we activate our long-term -term memory and um, listen to, uh, to it and compare with what we know on the topic, we compare with what we hear right now. The background knowledge required for top-down processing may be previous knowledge about the topic of discourse, situational or contextual knowledge between them. Okay. Top-down example tasks that you will meet in Prepare Ukrainian Edition. First, Students generate a list of things they already know about the topic and things they would like to learn more about, then listen and compare. For example, if we have a recording about uh, the USA uh, celebrations, what are typical USA cele uh, celebrations? Thanksgiving Day, the 4th of July, maybe some students know about it, maybe not. Everybody will definitely say that it's New Year, Christmas and so on. 
so we brainstorm all we know about celebrations in the USA and then compare with what we hear. And that's how we activate the top down processing. Students read a list of key points to be covered in a talk, then listen to see which ones are mentioned. Especially it works on the lower levels like A2 level in grade five, uh, when we actually learn new vocabulary and uh, have listening and reading tasks all together. This is, this is how it works in prepare as well. Yeah, so students, um, Look at the words, look at the new words, make match, um, complete matching activities, so on, um, acquire the meaning of these words and they, then they listen to where they heard them. Students listen to part of the story, complete the story ending, uh, then listen and compare endings. The best, um, the best way to do it with stories, right? With uh, uh, stories that have plots. So uh, we can do it as well. And students read news headlines, guess what happened, then listen to the full news items and compare. Again, uh, that's one more for top-down example tasks. If we think about bottom-up listening processes, uh, what is going on here? Uh, using the incoming input as the basis for understanding the message. For example, we play the recording without any explanation and then we ask where do you uh, and uh, students listen to it uh, and make their assumptions after they heard the conversation. Where was it going on? And for example, we heard the um, cut cutlery clinging, we uh, heard people talking everywhere on the background, uh, we heard the um, words that mark the items for food um, and so on. So they assume it's happening in the restaurant and who is speaking? And then we pay attention to the modality, students pay attention to the modality intuitively. Yeah, somebody was ordering food and somebody was taking this order. So most probably it's a waiter and a customer and so on. So uh, this is bottom-up listening. When we get information from the context, not vice versa, when we activate uh, knowledge for listening. Comprehension begins with the received data that is analyzed. Sounds, words, clauses, sentences, text until meaning is derived. And comprehension is viewed as a process of decoding. So um, in uh, these two processes, bottom up and top down li listening are happening simultaneously, depending on the knowledge of the topic, um, for students, they identify what they already know and what's new in this piece of information. So uh, bottom up example tasks, recognize the time reference, uh, distinguish between positive and negative statements. Now, yeah, if somebody is using no, not, I don't want to and so on, we try to understand what's happening. Um, recognize the order in which words occur, uh, occur in an utterance. Questions, statements, and so on. Identify sequence markers. Yesterday, today, uh, and the whole narrative. Identify, identify keywords that occurred in the spoken text and identify which modal verbs occurred in the spoken text. Okay. If we look at um, the examples in prepare Ukrainian edition, what's going on here? Uh, for example, topic three, my home, excuse me. Topic three, my home. And as you can see, the very first task is about you. Where do you live? Is your home big or small? And students need to have this small conversation uh, or response with each other in pairs or in groups before they go to listening. And here we see vocabulary and listening section. 
So before we get to listening, we uh, check whether students know all of these words, bathroom, bedroom, di dining room, and so on. And uh, they look at the pictures, identify what is what. If they don't know it, we help them with these words. We uh, check the meaning, we check the pronunciation. If needed, we drill these words and um, again, match the things um the photo uh to the words in the box bath door floor shower and so on so pieces of furniture uh or um what's in the house and the actual names of the rooms and only then we can listen to um to the conversation and go to more tasks uh after which we can using this conversation as a model uh, we can um, see where our communication can go and uh, prepare also includes a really great um, range of videos different kinds of videos there are videos uh, of uh, students interviews uh, stand-ups, like they're talking on some topic, they have conversations and so on. But uh, there are also videos, one of them I will show, culture videos that tell uh, something specific on the topic, for example, about pre um, celebrations in the USA, the one I mentioned, about uh, youth clubs in Great Britain and so on. So we will now look at one of the videos but before we go to it, uh, it's one of the videos on <clears throat> places in the United Kingdom in the culture section. Uh, and the first task in the video worksheet that you can actually download for free, uh, as well as the videos. Uh, the first uh, question would be, uh, it's like after we had the topic uh, on culture after we created a project and know everything about the castles and so on. Uh, we move to this worksheet. And here we have uh, work with a partner and discuss the question, can you remember what the four countries in the United Kingdom are and so on. So we activate their top-down processes. Uh, we activate their background knowledge. What nationalities are people from Wales? Again, it's activation of the vocabulary they've learned. Uh, then, do you know any other facts about Wales? So what? Uh, I can see your question. I will answer that question at the end of the webinar uh, when we have time. I'll uh, I'll keep it uh, in in mind. Uh, then. We ask students uh, to match um, to, to match the words and their uh, meanings, uh, to tick everything, yeah, uh, what we hear while listening to the video. Let's look at this video and uh, uh, the quality of this video and um, uh, pay attention to how slowly the speaker is talking and uh, how uh, pictures are appearing and whether it's better to listen to uh, this kind of um, this kind of audio okay What do you like to do after school? Watch TV? Play computer games? Hang out with friends? Help people in your community? Some kids join clubs or organizations so they can make friends and help their community. One club is called the Boy Scouts. A man, a man called, called W.D. Boyce started, started the Boy Scouts in the United, United States, States in 1908. In 1908. He, he wanted to help young men learn outdoor skills and also, and also be helpful, helpful to their communities. By 1910, there were Boy Scout clubs in Sweden, 
Mexico, Argentina, Canada, Australia, and South Africa. At first, Boy Scouts were boys from 11 to 15 years old. But soon, younger boys wanted to join. Now there are the Cub Scouts, for boys under the age of 10. Of course, there are clubs for girls, too. The Girl Scouts organization started in 1912. The Girl Scouts teach girls courage, compassion, confidence, and leadership. They also teach them how to sell things, like cookies. Lots of Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts make lots of good friends. So, what kind of club do you want to join? Now I'm audible. Uh, this is one uh, one of the videos from Prepare Ukrainian Edition. Uh, I, I think uh, I have a tiny, teeny um, uh, mismatch with the worksheet and the video uh, because I downloaded uh, the diff different ones. Uh, but you can actually um, download them for free. They are on the linguist uh, publishing linguist website, and you can find find all of the um, the whole range of videos for each topic. Uh, each unit includes um, one or even two videos. So have a look at those and have a look at the worksheets for uh, these videos. Uh, even though I played the video about uh, youth clubs in the um, in the UK and in the world. Uh, anyways, there would be tasks uh, connected to pictures to mark something and so on. And then there would be tasks to listen and watch the video again for uh, specific answers. And there would be uh, tasks um, for minor communication as well. Now we move to speaking how speaking works in uh, prepare Ukrainian edition. We will look at it. Uh, we actually um, had uh, had a very, very similar webinar previously. So I will be reminding you how speaking works in prepare. But before we go to that, what is the product of developing speaking skills? I would even ask what are the goals of teaching students to speak. You can, uh, over to you in the chat. What are the goals of developing speaking skills? Fluency in speaking, okay. Ability to communicate, okay. Interaction, exchange information, fluency, communication. Okay, thanks a lot. Let's see what I have. So uh, the goals are, okay, ability to express, fluency, cooperation, collaboration, communication. Yes, the C words. That's always our purpose. Okay, confidence. All right, so um, the main goals would be also uh, students should actually talk a lot. Language should be on the level, not above the level, not below the level, but on the level that we are approaching. 
which means that uh, we can't demand um, uh, students in the fifth grade, fifth grade uh, talk about environmental problems on the level of B1 or even the end of A A A2. Yeah, only on the level of what we are learning now. So they should use the words they've learned from the previous topics and some new words to incorporate them in the language uh, as well as grammar. And speaking works for communication. All of you wrote about communication. Thanks a lot. So we speak to communicate. We speak not to reproduce something as it was very popular uh, when I when we were studying right so we speak to understand and to be understandable and we usually listen while speaking yeah uh, when we have a conversation we we'll listen and then we res respond with the speech what are the challenges in speaking uh so it's usually shyness inhibition finding things to say low participation of individuals and language one use i'm sure you know all of that and can actually name even more but um these are the main problems uh, that we face with the students and uh, um, why that is so. We will look at the cognitive processes as we did with um, listening, which is perceptive skill. We will look at speaking as a cognitive process. So we have uh, students activating their long-term memory knowledge on the topic the language on this topic, context of uh, interaction, then uh, students conceptualize their knowledge on this topic and then they formulate and articulate simultaneously. So speaking is rather more difficult process than lis listening if we are speaking co uh, about the cognitive process. Yeah, the um, things that are going on in our heads when we are speaking is a little bit more complicated uh, and um, it is important to teach students uh, to self-monitor while they're speaking, to hear themselves speaking, to think normally before speaking and um, to formulate and articulate. So uh, these are the cognitive processes. If we, uh, in listening, we just had top down and bottom up. Here we have the whole triangle. Yeah, I'm showing that, but it's on the slide. The whole triangle of processes uh, and a rectangle around it. Uh, so uh, we need to be patient, first of all, because this is a very slow process. Like uh, when we study music, we play by the notes um, and we first play very slowly. We need to think where to put our fingers if, if it's the piano uh, and so on. The same is happening with speaking um, before we build these connections in their uh, neurons, between their neurons. So before we build these connections, these ways, so the processes are happening uh, automatically, it takes time. So let's be patient uh how speaking works in prepare again we are mentioning about you sections when students activate their knowledge on any topic and these sections go before every um before every unit uh at the end we will have uh talking points i will show them later uh here Listening tasks usually include communication, like uh, simple communication, uh, take turns to ask and answer. And here we train them uh, not the meaningful communication, but the basics, ask and answer. What's this? This is that. What's on the photo C? There is a bank on the photo C and uh, so on. Um, and we need to remember that uh, 
Previously, we had this model of presentation practice production. Nowadays, it's discovery collaboration use. This process might go a little bit slower, but it's much better in terms of uh, acquisition of the language and actually using it. Uh, I will move a little bit faster. Uh, then uh, speaking exercises and uh, here we have what other places can you think of in a town or a city? Make a list with your partner. They are making a list and then make a word map of your town like um, the one that was there in exercise one. Uh, but make a word map. Yeah, so they put the words according to what is where in their town in a form of the map uh, and try to explain directions to each other. So they actually have the visual help uh, for uh, their partner and for themselves to speak because it's really difficult to speak from scratch um, since we remember that we have this conceptualizing. And with kids, they, it's difficult for them to formulate and um, articulate and conceptualize at the same time. So we ask students to make a picture, which is conceptualization moment. So they conceptualize it with picture and then they only have to formulate and articulate what's on the picture. Okay. Um, and use of the language. Uh, it's another video. Uh, they watched another video and uh, th there were students speaking to each other. Uh, and then there is um, a conversation. Yeah, use a word map. They, they already uh, created it uh, and they need to tell a story, not just the places, but to tell um, all the information about themselves. And if, if it were me uh, teaching this class, I would ask them to make another word map for an imaginary character because it's much easier to talk about someone else. Uh, they can actually bring their imaginary characters. I have uh, okay, I have a bear. So um, make a word map for this bear and uh, tell me a story where he lives, uh, what uh, he can do there, where he usually goes, um, what he likes, like in shopping or restaurant or swimming pool and so on. And it will, um, it will make the process much easier because they don't have to talk about themselves all the time. Okay, we are saying goodbye. Thank you, Bear. Uh, uh, it will be easier for them to distance, um, to create this distance and talk about uh, their <laughs> friend, imaginary character, or a toy, uh, or any other object. They can draw someone and tell about him, and so on. And of course, we um, boost creativity uh, with uh, this kind of task. So, uh, I had a lot of questions, sorry. I had a lot of questions uh, regarding prepare. Um, this is what we have. Um, as of now, students' book and workbook are available as samples online. Teacher's book is available online, but this is a pilot version. It's not the final version. Uh, the final version, version will be introduced uh, in a week, and only after that, students uh, teach teachers will be able to uh, make their choice. Uh, so um, uh, this, um, this book, Prepare Ukrainian Edition, will be uh, on the list to, uh, for, for teachers to choose uh, so they receive the book, the student's book, from, um, for their library, right? as well as it happened with quick minds or smart junior um, so uh, teachers can choose the book for the library we provide free access as the linguist company we provide free access to teachers book which will be 
online, free downloadable materials, audio, video, and video worksheets, the ones I showed you. And you, um, uh, in the thank you letter that you will receive after the webinar, you will find all the links. Uh, there will be prepare Ukrainian edition. You follow that link and you will find there everything. Yearly plans, free, downloadable, already created for the standard, uh, three and a half hours. Tests and worksheets already available free, downloadable, not all the tests, but the main diagnostic tests are there. Because um, there are also tests in the student's book. If we are talking about the workbook, workbook will be, um, pr and one more thing, the book is not printed yet. We can't print the book before uh, teachers choose uh, the book. We don't know the amount of the books right now. So uh, they will be available, the books, the print books, will be available uh, for the next school year, while workbooks, the same, will be available for the next school year. So uh, those who are asking about prices, about uh, um, prices of the whole thing. We cannot say it right now because we don't know how many books uh, we are going to print. And uh, regarding, um, regarding the materials that uh, teachers will need to uh, provide for students, not from the um uh, not from the government yeah students book will be free students book will be free for um for the schools and the libraries if teachers vote for it workbook will have to be purchased uh, there will be a, um, a good price for it but the point is that this is the workbook, which is uh, the possession of a student, as well as any other notebook where students are supposed to write. So uh, government cannot um, supply schools with this kind of materials like pens, pencils, notebooks, workbooks. This is the responsibility of a uh, stu student and student, stu well, uh, th this is the material to to write in. Um, okay, a little bit more about uh, prepare Ukrainian edition. It completely uh, completely um, works with the new Ukrainian school standard because it was uh, created. Um, of course, as an authentic material in 2021, uh, it was published as an international version. Adaptations uh, were uh, taking place starting, starting from 2020 till, uh, till now. We are still piloting it, uh, working on it, and um, it absolutely fits the, um, the standard and it absolutely fits the modal programs uh, that will be there uh, in the next year. Uh, it includes integrated formative assessment. What it means that every block of units has a strong assessment tool, which is called review section, uh, and that will help students with their self-assessment, help uh, teachers with uh, their teacher's assessment as well as a diagnostic work. Um, nowadays, over 3,000 students are piloting Prepare Ukrainian Edition in different schools all over Ukraine, and 100% of pilot teachers recommend Prepare Ukrainian Edition to work with uh, it uh, was highly evaluated by um, by uh, pilot teachers. 
Okay, I will remind once again for the question from Lyudmila Yeremchuk, will the teacher's book prize be? Uh, teacher's book is free online on the linguist, uh, pu publishing linguist website. You will have the link in the, uh, at the end of the webinar. It's for now, it's free online and it will, but it's pilot version. The actual version will be free online for the next school year. If you want to buy a print version, the price will be different for prepare Ukrainian edition. I think it will be like five times uh, smaller price, but we don't know it yet. Okay. Um, and uh, prepare Ukrainian uh, edition um, is uh, the, the piece of work done by Cambridge University Press, Cambridge Assessment English and the Linguist Company. Okay, I've got a question here. The course is recommended by the Ministry of Education. Uh, it uh, just yesterday it was licensed to uh, to um, take part in the competition which will be held uh, by EMZO in March not yet and you will hear more about this course um, on the 18th of February uh, when there will be a range of webinars held by um, EMZO. Okay. Um, what's inside? There is also a vocabulary list at the end with transcription and translation into Ukrainian. There are grammar references and more grammar practice. Pronunciation um, work, a lot of pronunciation work and uh, proper reading and spelling work throughout the whole book. All the uh, exercises are informed by English profile database. This is a system that links language to the CEFR levels. What it means, Cambr uh, uh, Common European Framework of References. Level A2, one, B1, um, C1, and so on. So these are the levels, CFR levels. And all the exercises are informed by this system, which means that there will not be um, any vocabulary or grammar below or above this level. Uh, and uh, uh, well, it might be something above the level, especially at the end of the course, but it's all on the level. We were mentioning that it's important, important for students' motivation and so on. Cambridge English course corpus also, uh, all the tasks are informed by Cambridge English corpus. Uh, so it means that all the language is relevant, up to date, the real world English that is uh, that people use these days, not the language from the 19th or 20th century, actually a yeah, 20th century, because there are such constructions as shall, uh, shall we go, or uh, they ought to go to the doctor or something like that, something that is not being used these days, you will not meet it in the book uh, as um, relevant for speaking or writing and so on. Uh, it might be there as a rule, but not as uh, a suggestion to use for real life communication. Uh, personalized communication. We saw it projects in every culture and life skills section for students, collaboration, communication, learning to learn, creativity, social responsibilities and emotional development and so on. Here, lots of projects. Inductive grammar teaching, what it means uh, that grammar is uh, acquired much better by students who are taught inductively. What it means, inductive teaching, that students 
discover how language works and um, then they consolidate and practice it a lot, listen to it a lot, read it, see it in different contexts and conclude uh, that yes, this is useful construction to use in real life. Life competencies assessment, I already mentioned it. Uh, you can see here a page with the uh, uh, reading tasks. So uh, th there are quite good, um, relevant and interesting motivating texts. They are not very short, they are not very long. Uh, they are exactly on the level so students can uh, read it and not get too tired of reading. They don't forget what they bega uh, began with and uh, until they read it till the end, they don't remember what happened. So uh, it's exactly, to it's a little bit longer than uh, primary students can perceive, uh, but uh, as much as teenagers are um, able to develop in them for reading strategies. Okay. Um, you can find all the materials on Publishing Linguist UA and uh, I can see your questions, I will answer them. You can find all the materials in another place, Pages, uh, Pages Cambridge English Org, Prepare Ukraine. Here, um, you can also find the link in our Facebook page uh, and there, uh, there is a great navigating website that will help you understand what's where for prepare. Uh, there is also a platform for teachers that will uh, give you your 10 hours of professional development for secondary teachers. Uh, it's for free. You can already pass this um, uh, test, uh, listen to everything and uh, you will, you will find uh, you will find it on New, uh, New Ukra Ukrainian School English Com UA. Uh, it's free, created by Cambridge University Press, Cambridge Assessment English, British Council, and the Ministry of Education and Science of Ukraine. Uh, there is also a group in Facebook with all the updates on this um, platform. And these are my contact details. So we still have time for a few questions and I will uh, scroll uh, some of them. Uh, whether the course is adopted by the Ministry of Education? Oh, not yet, uh, because uh, teachers will have to choose what they are going to work with in March. The list of the um, of the course books will be there available uh, next week. Yes, teacher's book is free downloadable, but again, note that this is a pilot version. It's not the perfect version. Um, it's the one that teachers were using this year and we were improving it for uh, for the next year.